Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Gerbeck. Got to talk into the microphone. I have to use stick. I have to use technology. I can do without it, actually. It's <laughs> test, test, test. Can you hear me in the back? It died. Did I press a button? I think so. Test, test. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's on now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so much better. Okay. Well, well, sorry about all that. I have to say that I wish my mom and my dad could have been here to hear all this. My dad would have thought it's all very nice, and my mother would have believed every word. <laughs> In seriousness, I'm just blown, blown away and bored over. Barry, Colin, Susie, or Jody, we're seven. Well, I'll get to you guys in a moment. <laughs> but nothing could be a better gift than my friend Dan McCormick writing a super song about me. <laughs> we have performed so many of these parodies over the years. Just had so much fun. I, I love the one where where he wrote the song, a parody that he wrote for me uh, about being the investment business. And, I really don't know my assets from a hole in the world. That was a fun time, and we did this for some organization. I can't believe I sang it. <laughs> but uh, uh, the uh, fun that you're talking about, I, I, I had no idea. Or uh, most of this is a surprise. I said this is the first time maybe in my career that I'm at an event that I had not, nothing to do with organizing. <laughs> and look how wonderful you guys all did. And it's just an amazing thing. So uh, I would like to share with you uh, just a little bit of history. I, I'm going to try to get through this. You know, as you get older, many of you will know that you do get more emotional, right? Katie says, I will cry at the Kmart closing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting worse, I'm telling you. <laughs> but I want to recognize my friend Dwight Smith. Uh, I don't see Dwight around. Dwight started with a, a, an organization, a foundation called My Special Word. Dwight was a governing member of the Columbus Foundation and a dear client of ours. And he deals with children and he goes around, around the world now, worldwide, even in South Africa, with an organization that we connected uh, together. And he uh, challenged children to come up with a word that is special to them and to then live their lives according to that word. Well, I attended one of these sessions many years ago with Dwight, and I picked my special word for that day, and I use that special word every day. My special word is gratitude. I am so grateful for everything that I've been given. Okay, I worked hard, I had a lot of lucky breaks. I met the most wonderful lady in South Africa in 1976 after she had hitchhiked around the world and hitchhiked through Africa from Nairobi to Johannesburg. When I heard that, and this, this girl with this funny accent that I'd never met an American before, I said, I have to have this one. He won. She left, she left South Africa uh, after having been there six years. She got there in 1970. I met her in 1976. Went to Rio de Janeiro on vacation to come home to America. I met her in Rio de Janeiro and proposed to her. She said, why didn't you ask me in South Africa? We could have saved a lot of money. <laughs> 
Smith, her family, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, Vernon Park and Ray Star, pillars in this community, pillars in the Hilliard community. Katie's father was associate dean of the vet school at Ohio State. And uh, Katie's mother, we, last night we were at the Hilliard Education Foundation where I was a trustee for a number of years and where Jessica has established the Jessica Grobe Fund for the Performing Arts. And uh, we went to their board meeting, they invited us because they wanted to make a, it's a little presentation. Some of you may know that last year Jessica came and did her Jess and Judy one woman show uh, for a benefit. And they told me, we might as well just be throwing out numbers, last night that that fund now is $58,000 in it. And I said, well, I wanted it to be 100000 so that no child in that school system with talents would be pre precluded from pursuing that talent for lack of funds. And that's the same with the opera uh, uh, competition. Uh, we were going to cancel that because we couldn't afford it anymore. And I said, we cannot waste the, the heritage and the memory of the people who started this and what this organization is doing. And from five life trustees on the opera, I raised $500,000. Well, you talk about this Sunday. I forgot to do that. About what? Competition this Sunday at three o'clock. Yeah, the competition is actually this uh, Sunday at uh, three o'clock, and it's, it's live broadcast around the world. Mm -hmm. It's just an amazing thing to see how that put Opera Columbus on the map, and it's like Charlie said, ten thousand uh, dollars in first price. Uh, so I grew up in South Africa, grew up really poor. My dear friend and client uh, Gary Rains, uh, uh, an anesthesiologist here in Columbus. Some of you will remember him. Uh, had bought a new eight-foot uh, grand piano. Uh, he was a very gifted pianist. And he invited me over to come try the piano. And I said, gee, Gary, it, this it even makes me sound halfway decent. Uh, and he, I, I said, he, he said to me, really, since I was 14 years old, I wanted the piano like this. I said, you know, Gary, it's amazing how different our backgrounds are. When I was 14 years old, and this is the truth, I, tr the truth, I was wishing that I had a pair of everyday shoes. I had Sunday school shoes. I didn't have a pair of, because we all walked around barefoot in the poor community in which I grew up in South Africa. And Gary said, in the very go wonderful, we both got what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, introduce my children. Laura Jessica, you just met. Many of you know about her wonderful career. I want to introduce her wonderful husband. Dan, would you stand up for just a second? Dan, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wonderful example of stage parents about what a son-in-law ought to be like and what the father and mother-in-law ought to be like. They adopted me as their own and treated me as their own to the day they died. And then I hope you feel the same way, because we feel that way about you. Because you gave us the two most wonderful... Would you stand up, Lolly? Stand on the chair. Gavin, stand up. Lolly and Gavin. And uh, it's just the joy of my life. In fact, they, the reason nothing to do with Dan or Jessica or their theater in Dexter, Michigan, outside Ann Arbor. Those are the two reasons we sold our place in Columbus and bought a house. <laughs> so that's where we will be spending our summers. Uh, I also would like to just mention our son, Thomas. Thomas uh, is in Japan, he lives in Osaka. And Katie and I, just uh, three weeks ago, a month ago, traveled to Osaka, went up to Naseko uh, in the, in the uh, Hikaido Island, up a uh, very northern island, and skied there for a week. And uh, as Jessica mentioned, I had a little ski injury. Uh, <laughs> skied for that week, skied another week in, in Denver with some of my friends here, Doug Yanka sitting there and others. And uh, went to see the doctor last week, Thursday. Doctor said, your clavicle is broken. Why didn't you go see a doctor? And I said, well, I was afraid that uh, might be the case, but I, I didn't want them to tell me I can't go skiing. <laughs> I, I thought I'd go see a doctor after I finished. <laughs>
In South Africa, I worked for a very large construction company and I was very blessed that I received a very good uh, higher education in South Africa uh, up to the graduate level. And uh, that company ended up buying, buying a company in uh, Troy, Michigan. Uh, and in 1977, Katie and I flew back to the States. We got married September the 4th. Fourth. 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 Because Tom and Judy got married, Tom's brother, Katie's brother, Dr. Tharp. The uh, veterinarian and Judy got married on the third. <laughs> and so we said, well, they're going to get married. It's, it's Labor Day weekend. We might as well fly over and get married. We <laughs> 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 wanted to fly to have a double, double wedding. And uh, we ended up going back to South Africa. And a year later, uh, September of 1978, immigrated to the United States. Didn't have a job here. Uh, lived on the farm. But Katie's uh, family uh, lived on at the time. Uh, her parents took me in immediately. Uh, I, I will tell you that I did construction work. Uh, I helped lay a pipeline across, uh, uh, across Elm Creek in, the, in December. Uh, that was cold work. Uh, I sell, sold my plasma uh, for $10 a, a, a go. And what else did I do? I worked on a roadway during the night from uh, the midnight to 4 o'clock to, to, to uh, 8 o'clock shift in the morning and then uh, went to uh, work during the day for the construction company. I had to do that because Katie was pregnant with Tommy. And we didn't have any insurance, didn't know how we were going to pay for this baby. When we arrived in Michigan, the company from South Africa called me and said, we bought this company, would you like to come back and work for us? When we arrived in Michigan, January the 1st, 1979, uh, we had a car that was paid for with all the money that we could bring from South Africa. At that time, it wasn't much. And we literally had $20 left, seven months pregnant, no insurance, didn't know where we were going to sleep that night. Red Roof Inn was $24, and we only had 20 My new boss took us in for the night. To make a long story short, Katie went to Beaumont Hospital, negotiated a $400 price for this baby. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how life works, folks. The head of residence, because Katie was a clinic patient at that time, the head of residence uh, called me the, after he saw her the first time and he said, I'm coming over to your house tonight and I take real lime in my gin and tonic. <laughs> we didn't have gin, we didn't have tonic, and we didn't have lime. I went to the neighbors and borrowed it. <laughs> that man delivered both of our children, Jessica, Thomas first and Jessica, and became her godfather. His name is Dr. Lance Christensen. And to this day, a dear, dear friend. <laughs> Isn't a very good and wonderful? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America can $20 do this far. <laughs> to have this relationship with all of you is just un unbelievable. So I want to uh, start with thanking people. Because remember I said my special word is gratitude. There is so much to thank for, but uh, I think Derek mentioned the Ohio Company. There were people at the Ohio Company that took a chance on me that they probably never should have. I'm right from South Africa with a funny accent, and they didn't know me from Adam. We didn't, I didn't know anybody. And uh, the Wolf family, founders of this very zoo, were the owners of the Ohio Company at the time. And I thank them every day. But I also thank our commitment in the community. At that time, I started getting involved with Barbara Columbus as a volunteer, performing with the company, etc. And Katie uh, joined the uh, Women's Support Group of the Symphony. And uh, they were going someplace, and there was a lady uh, who worked at the Ohio Company. Her name was Marilyn Wendrick. Marilyn has passed on. But I want her to hear, uh, about a month before she passed, I sent her an email telling her all the things that had happened and thanking her for this. She said to Katie, what's Billy doing? Katie said, he's in the basement, he's between opportunities. He's in the basement <laughs> sending out the resumes. Trying to, because we just moved to Columbus and uh, we was in a business venture that didn't work out. So for six months, I was back to nothing. You know, when we first arrived in Michigan, nobody would even, we couldn't see us when he was a credit guy. Now we're $50,000 in the hole and everybody wants to lend us money. I said, that's 
America is an amazing place. <laughs> so uh, Marilyn said, well, I think you should have to give us a call. Give me a call because uh, I think you'll be really good in our business. And Katie said, well, what do you do? She said, well, I'm a broker with the Ohio company. And so I had no idea what a broker did. <laughs> We had, a, we had a money market account, but that's about all I knew about investments. And Katie said, you go to Paul Marilyn Wendry on Monday. I said, I, I don't know anything about that, Paul. I was desperate. I called Marilyn and arranged for me to meet with uh, the uh, uh, national sales manager. He interviewed me and uh, said, well, I think you'll be really good in our business. I said, well, can you explain to what you do? <laughs> he said, I think you can sell, sell I used to ask him, he said, <laughs> we can teach you all of the rest of the stuff. And that philosophy, I want to repeat when I talk, talk about Susie for a moment, but uh, I will thank Marilyn Wendry forever, but also if it wasn't for Katie's commitment to help raise money through this women's support group for the symphony, I wouldn't be standing here today. So people say, why are you so intent on, on this philanthropic involvement that if I live 10 lifetimes, I could never repay what we've been given through our involvement in the community. So yes, maybe we've contributed a little, we received so much more in return. The more you give, the more you get. The more you laugh, the less you're afraid. The more you give unselfishly, the more you live abundantly. The more of everything you share, the more you, you have to care. The more you, you, you laugh, you'll find that friends are good and life is kind for only what we give away enriches us from day to day. So with that, I want to say that at the Ohio Company, I embraced technology uh, very soon. Yesterday, let's see. Grant Kurtz and Randy Burns were my managers at the time. I <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> this phone was my first cell phone. So I mean that I it was my third year in the third week in the business and my friend Pat Doyle had on the side at the car business where you know back then you bought the car and then you had a radio installed, right? And this is in nineteen eighty three. And he had this car business and mine. Uh, and he said, How can your mic, Dad? Oh, sorry. He had this car business where he installed radios, and cell phones just came out. And he said, uh, You need a cell phone. I said, It's $1,400 for that phone. And it's hard. The box in the, in the trunk of the car was $1,400. I can't afford that. He said, You can't afford not to have a cell phone. You need a cell phone if you're going to be a broker. So I finally went to his place and had this phone installed in 19. February of 1984, 84. and I made a phone call to a client I'd been prospecting on my way back to the office and I made a trade that paid for the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that this phone was still around. Yesterday, Jody said, do you remember this phone? This was in your desk when we moved from one to the <laughs> Why would you keep a phone Aww. like this? <laughs> That led us, uh, it's kind of like an early uh, adopter, right? And uh, that's one of the things I think that really helped our team be successful, because we adopted technology from the start. And today we can do things in, with Curtis. Curtis, this morning I had a meeting, my first meeting as a client at UBS, <laughs> with Colin and Eric and with Curtis. And Curtis had you know, all these fantastic reports. I said, do you realize that when I started with Lotus 1, 2, 3, to get a report like that together, it take me a week. You can do it in 10 minutes. Think about what has happened in our business. I say again, only in America. I do want to acknowledge and recognize all the institutions that you've mentioned. Because I learned so much from Charlie Stearns Principal Village of Dublin, uh, Dr. Ned Dubai. What? How much I learned from you as president of the Methodist Theological uh, School in Ohio. Those two capital campaigns, these are the work alone that you led and that I was privileged to participate in. We left. How much did I learn from all of that?
How much did I learn from all of the mistakes and the screw-ups that we made? <laughs> and that's part of why I feel my next half, the next part of my life is going to be, has to be. You cannot take the accumulated knowledge that you've accumulated over the years and not do something with that that's better. Dr. Stephen Julian, where are you? Stephen? Back there. Uh, you know, we've had that man as our business coach for probably 15, 14, 15 years. And people say, why do you have a coach? You know, your, your team's at the pinnacle. I said, even Tiger Woods has a coach. And we wanted to go from good to great. And Stephen, you helped us as a team over through difficult times, through the successes, helped us to become who we are today and will be forever grateful. Stephen uh, sends a monthly newsletter in this morning's newsletter, uh, this month's newsletter I just read before coming here, and he actually quotes me in his newsletter this time. He says, uh, uh, he says that uh, I quoted my father, but my father was such a wise man that if I have a saying that I think is a good saying, it's always my father told me that. <laughs> and my father always said, give a, a, a man that's busy there's something to do and it'll get done. Give a, man, give a man who's got a lot of time on his hands and probably the job won't get done. Really go away, it's just it's Stephen's newsletter. The, the newsletter was, was titled Validating Work. And in the end, Stephen talks about retirement, and he says, well, in retirement, a lot of people retire and they think they're going to stop working. And I'm with you, Stephen, he said, I plan on retiring, continuing to work, just not getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> and that is our goal. Katie, I just want to tell you that I couldn't have had a better partner than you. <laughs> All of this. And I look forward so much to what we're going to accomplish in this last half. I turned 66, I told Katie I'm done with two thirds, I'm so excited about the last half. She said, Billy, that's not good math. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that we have more to accomplish over the next, who knows how much time God has given us. I'm, I'll be happy with another 10 or 12, 15 maybe. But there is so much to accomplish, so much that I've learned from all of you here. Now I just want to take a little bit of a side trip here and I want to thank all of you for being here. Without you, our clients, and some of you are friends, you're not clients, you're welcome to become clients. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank all of you for the effort, but there's two couples that I particularly want to thank. The second furthest who came for this event today is Dr. Dick Hendershot and Sandy sitting over there from Denver. Yes, you. A lot to me. One of the things that I remember is he's an anesthesiologist and he delivers a baby, the C-section baby in the Philippines. Is that right? And I said, an anesthesiologist delivering a baby C-section. Uh, you do what you want, what you have to do when you are sent on that mission. He did that. The furthest away, uh, this morning I saw at my office, uh, uh, Rusty and Judy Lemper. Rusty and Judy, they came from Phoenix. She said when they got the invitation, they told me that I it by <laughs> I wish that I had time to tell the story of each one of you and each one of our dear departed friends and clients. But I will say that there is not enough time. You've been standing a long time in, in the bars uh, waiting for you. <laughs> but uh, this morning, Judy said, I, I said hi to her because I just finished Katie. The first time ever that Katie had been in a, a financial planning meeting with me was today. <laughs> now we're a client and we've got the best in the country to, to uh, take care of us. But Judy stood up and with tears in her eyes, she said, you changed my life. And folks, it was not something very complicated. Back then, this probably in the early, very early 80s, Judy was the secretary, the assistant. Was it uh, Bill Russell or was it the yeah, Mike? For Bill Russell at Upper Columbus. 
And I said, well, we have to have a pension plan for these employees in Opera Columbus. And uh, so we set up a 503B plan. And I think I started duty with $100 a month. And Judy said, that started a discipline that has led the two of them today to have the funds that they can just pick up the phone and buy an airline ticket to come to Columbus for us. <laughs> so many of you have said so many wonderful things. And I wish, I wish that I could remember all of them. I'm so happy for the emails I received. I'm so happy for the box of cards that are out there. But uh, I wanted to tell you that the folks that I work with at UBS, John Remy, uh, Eric Puffenberger, Eric is on a trip. He was my branch manager. Uh, when we joined UBS in 2007, when they bought McDonald's Investments, the branch manager asked me if I would interview with, for her this uh, a uh, young guy that came from the bank as an assistant in the office. And I said, Kelly, I don't think bank people is good for our business. You, you want to hire investment type people. So you know, just humor me and interview him. Eric's not here now, but he made a point last night to stop by our hotel and spend an hour and a half with me to tell me that if it wasn't for my thumbs up at that meeting that he would have never been hired and Eric has been had a meteoric rise in this business over the last 15 years. I did not do, we were driving here and I said to Patty, every one of these little things that you've told me that it made a difference in your lives. When we sat down at that first meeting or the second meeting or after, uh, I said I never really thought about making a lifetime difference. And when you get here, 40 years later, and people come up and tell you that you've made a difference in my life, I don't know that I can overflow my heart with any more gratitude than that, because I'm thankful for each one of you, I'm thankful for each one of my team members, each one of the UBS folks who are here and who are not here. Uh, it's not always been an easy road, but always we've been treated with respect, always we've been treated with dignity, and I don't think you can say that for every, for every company and every business. You heard Colin and Derek's story about how they ended up joining me. I'm going to tell you about Susie quickly, because Susie and I were both soloists in the choir at Trinity Methodist Church. That's how we got to know each other. Through Susie, obviously, is a and I was the tenor soloist for 30 years in that church. And uh, I needed an assistant in 19... 25 years ago, whatever the year was, and uh, Susie needed a job. And I said, well, why don't you come in and let's sit down and... She said, really, I sing songs. She's got a master's in vocal performance. I said, well, I know the discipline that it takes to get through that kind of a program, and that's what we want. Plus, you've got the passion, you've got the attitude, the skills I can teach. She said, I don't even know what a speech she needs. <laughs> Today, 25 years later, I don't know what we would have done over all these years without Susie. Thank you for everything. <laughs> and thank you for the movie. We, Susie and I together sang at uh, clients' children's weddings, sang at clients' parents' funerals, together and separately. I have a list, I asked her, give me a list of all our clients that passed away since you joined me. I think there's about 35. Oh my goodness. And do you know that in every case of those where there is uh, a client that passed away, if they have children or grandchildren, those children and grandchildren are with us. We uh, named our building uh, Muirfield Wealth Partners, you probably wonder why. Well, that's where I started my career, really. It was in the Muirfield office of Advest, along with a fellow by the name of Bill Sipper. Bill is not here tonight. He's enjoying the Florida sun. But uh, for years, Bill and I talked about putting our practices together. And I always said, Bill, we'll kill each other because you can only have one elf on my leave. You can have two. <laughs> and uh, uh, three years ago, we actually put our teams together and we went back to our heritage. And that's why we are called Muirfield Health Partners. This is the picture here. I think there's 16 of us there. 
uh, we are blessed that we have just been named in, in uh, November last year as one of the top 100 uh, wealth advice teams in the country. My team said I shouldn't say this, but I'll say that we were actually number 15 on the Barons on the Forbes list in Little Columbus, Ohio, folks. I, you guys are amazing, Frank. I have been very visible, as they have mentioned. Uh, I've been on all of the councils and what have you, and the only reason I know is because I've been standing on the shoulders of those giants that sort of made me visible. The final analysis is all about how do we leave this world? Where do we go from here? What contribution can we make? And some of you asked me that, and I'll finish by saying that I am so grateful that I can exit this business at the top of a career when I didn't have shoes at 14 years old. <laughs> That's just an amazing thing. And in the wire, we, had to, uh, we had actually did a seminar at Mathesco for uh, educating our constituents and record that seminar only in America, using my story for that. And I think, if I think back on all the wonderful things and the wonderful people, I wish I could name you each. I have you, all of your names down, but it'll, we'll be here at midnight if I actually do, do my whole speech. I'm just grateful and gratified that at this stage, this age, I'll be 74, most people have been retired 10 years by now. <laughs> uh, if you love what you do, Stephen, at the end of your newsletter today, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, I might have worked five or six days, but no <laughs> So. I am gratified that I'm leaving this place and leaving all of you with the best in the country. The best in the country. Marlon Weinman here, her husband Milt passed away uh, recently and Marlon's, uh, Marlon was Katie's father's secretary at Ohio State where he was associate dean of the vet school for how many years? I can't remember. Yeah, I remember that many. And Milt, her husband, was uh, also a veterinarian teacher at, uh, with Katie's father. We have uh, a music stand that's made out of uh, walnut wood from the farm that Katie and Tom were raised on. And Milt Wyman and Dr. Wa Dr. Farb, my father-in-law, made that for me. And that's a place of wonder in my house. <laughs> I can go through here and I can keep you one by one. Where's Bill Real? You know, who would go, go to the track, uh, the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu with? Bill Real, of course. Uh, <laughs> Doug Yucker is going to be doing the tra trek in Greenland with me in, in August. Uh, I, I, I can go on and on the things that you people, nothing to do with investments. And I think that is certainly, from my perspective, that has made me love you all. Because there is not a person here that I can say, that I can say that I do not feel so close to personal relationship. Art, common. You honored me being here today. Our common is in, in, in Columbus, probably the mayor of the investment business. And you took the time to come here tonight. I'm the oldest. Appreciate <laughs> 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 it. I can go on and do it already. You know, my doctor, where are you? You <laughs> came <laughs> and he has, he has a different way with you. <laughs> with that, I'm going to say enough said. And thank you, thank you, thank you again. Cheers!